Look, just look at all the famous people. <gasps> That's what we ordinary civilians do. Pointing, staring, taking pictures all the time. I feel like a circus animal most of the time. But this isn't funny, because some people simply don't know where to draw the line between gawking and stalking. People do go too far sometimes. One guy bought me a wedding dress and set up a shrine in his um, house to marry me. Tonight, we issue a health warning to all would-be celebrities, put fame itself under the microscope and ask, is it really safe for these people to walk the streets? Your death at the hands of a lynch mob will not be mourned because you are ugly, bitter scum. It's official. Britain's obsessed with celebrities. Why else would we blow almost a quarter of a billion a year on our pulp addiction? I want to know everything about them. Everything. I can't get enough. It's just... A, it's an OCD. Obsessive celebrity disorder. <laughs> and it's a global affliction, with bus tours to the stars' front doors, websites posting live celebrity sightings, and endless picture spreads and gossip. Holy false idols. Religions declined. We no longer believe in kind of the kings and the monarchy. We believe in celebrity instead. We want to go at them because we want to know more about them. Yeah, ain't that the truth? Billy Piper goes to the gym. Mylene urinates. <gasps> Jordan gets on a plane. Blimey. Spotting a celeb is just like it's it's like finding gold. They're three-dimensional. You can touch them, you can smell them. It's brilliant. I went to Spain recently and thought that I could just have a nice break. I sat there and people were just coming up and gawping at me, but they literally will come up and prod me almost to check if I'm real. And with more celebs than ever roaming our streets, spotting them has become one big game of human bingo. Now with cash prizes, ka-ching. Look, Jerry actually taking on fluids. Gotcha. Because we see them only, really, in, in glamorous lights. We see them on television when they're on stage, when they're, when they're presenting something. The idea of all the little bits of crap that humans have to do to sort of exist, um, just the juxtaposition of those two seems to be endlessly fascinating. Whatever anybody even remotely famous does, we're watching. Some of them can't stand the uh, heat. The rest of us love it. Whatever you think of Heat magazine, you do have to acknowledge that it has taken the ball and run with it. It is the Gawker's Bible. Spotted was a kind of organic idea that we brought into the magazine, I think, in the year 2000. It was kind of credit card-sized box in the magazine, and it was very popular, so we actually made it into a spread. And it's become a real cult thing, and a lot of other publications now do this. And everyone can get enjoyment from it, whether you're reading it or actually doing the spotting yourself. Of course, modern technology means we now use a newfangled weapon for happy snapping our VIP prey. Nowhere is safe for a celebrity these days. Phone cameras have become part of life. People sort of expect now to be able to take pictures, so you get that Robbie Williams advert, which is totally based around phone cameras. And which appears to say, go on, obsess over your idols, gawk with impunity, so long as you've got a posh phone to do it with. If he ever moans about somebody taking a picture of him with a phone camera, I think we'll be able to accuse him of hypocrisy. I think camera phones must be a real pain in the ass for celebrities. Camera phones are getting scary now, because everyone's taking pictures of everything. Would you want to be dragged off your chair halfway through your dinner to go and pose for ten pictures with a load of people with camera phones? No, you wouldn't. It's quite frightening, because you think, who has got pictures of me on their phone? Weird. But hang on a minute. Doesn't the first law of fame clearly state, thou shalt become public property? It's great being a celeb. And the only downside, they call it the fame tax, is the fact that you are having people interested in you. They love it. They totally love it. But they do this kind of like, oh, my God, this terrible thing's happened today. I've got a picture of my arse in page 17 of The Sun. Have you seen it? And they just sit there and they read every word about themselves. Any celebrity who says they doesn't is a complete liar. Celebrities are experts um, at the celebrity game. 
they know the signals to send out to the media and they know where the media are going to be and they can also arrange for the media to be there and people like Les, Les Dennis can, can easily phone up people and say <laughs> that he's been spotted shopping. Hello, Heat Magazine. Oh, yeah, hi. Um, do you deal with the celebrity spotted section? Can do, yeah. Why? Who have you seen? Well, I just spotted Les Dennis, the comedian and impressionist and actor Les Dennis. I just spotted him shopping in New Bond Street. Doubt he'd fall much around there, can he? Well, he can, because I just saw him and he was spending a fucking shitload of cash. All right, so put that in. Make sure you put that in. It's a game and they love this pretense of like, oh, I can't believe I got snapped in Starbucks. You knew you were going to be snapped. Celebrities love attention because I think every human being loves attention. But of course, there's attention and attention. <laughs> there are different types of attention. And once attention becomes intrusive, that's when celebrities want to avoid it at all costs. Stalking is a big problem for normal people, but it's a massive, massive problem for celebrities. The vast majority will be targeted by one or more stalkers at some point in their career. Charlotte Church, she's the number one celebrity who I know who's had the most hell from stalkers. Jessie Wallace from EastEnders, she had stalkers. Um, a lot of the younger um, soap stars, you know, Nikki Sanderson, who's in Coronation Street, she's got a stalker. He follows around all the time, he knows where she shops. So for every million nice people, there might be one person with quite different intentions. And the problem for the celebrity, of course, is you can never read people that accurately. It's hard to know when you're safe and when you're not. Something George Michael found out the hard way when gawking became stalking. An overzealous fan, Lucy Nowak's attentions came home to roost, literally. George Michael was in his house, minding his own business, and heard a noise. George! Investigated it and discovered a woman under his floorboards. He had been living there for three or four days. George! That really would freak you out. That is frightening. I mean, what can you see through the floorboards for four days apart from up George Michael's dressing gown, really? And that's not, that's not an edifying sight for anyone, I don't think. After the break, we meet the fans whose obsessions have tested the boundaries between gawking and stalking. And ask if anybody's safe when a housemaid who doesn't even win Big Brother bags their very own very twisted stalker. What can you do? philosopher once asked, when will I, will I be famous? Or someone should have told him, be careful what you wish for, sunshine. All that being gawked at by strangers can really do your nothing. The progression of famous people tends to be that when they are what you call minor celebs, they're thrilled when they get recognised. You know, they're virtually going around saying, anyone want my autograph by any chance? You know, they love it. <laughs> Pretty soon, that novelty wears off. Then fame can become... Yeah, like a prison. You guys please stab it. Celebrities are in a really, really difficult position. A lot of people say, oh, Diddums, you know, I wish I had their problems. Actually put yourself in their shoes and imagine that you're being looked at 24 hours a day. Every little thing you do, you change your hair. 200 people take a photograph of you. It's very, very intrusive and, of course, it's upsetting. Don't forget, all famous people were not famous once. They can remember what it's like and they can't do it anymore. If I'm having a meal with, with my friends and my family, as soon as I go to the toilet, you know, I will often get followed by a member of the public. Someone will be there, you know, can I have an autograph? And I'm like, can I just wash my hands first? <laughs> There's only one person that's ever really scared me, and that's the guy that bought me a wedding dress and set up a shrine in his um, house to marry me. But everyone else has been really nice. <laughs> I just thought, no, I really, really don't want to marry you. <laughs> the dress is hideous. <laughs> I did have a man apply for a marriage licence for me and him and um, housing benefit for us to get a flat in Manchester. That's kind of crossing the line, <laughs> would you not think? Just a bit. People do go too far sometimes. The thing that kind of does my nutting is when they turn up at your house, that's your space. You don't want people ringing your doorbell every five minutes. Yes, life as hot boy Bantotti can be tough, but at least Duncan has a crack squad of adoring honeys to console him. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> it all began about 
October 2004 when my daughter wanted tickets to go to the Best of Blue Tour. And when I seen Duncan, I just thought, that guy is stunning, and that was me. Hook, line and sinker. My husband says I prefer Duncan to him. But CDs and posters aren't enough to say Darlene's Duncan habit. Getting up close and personal is what it's all about. Do you think that's me he's talking about? <laughs> Stalkers are not necessarily your obsessive, shadowy figure kind of lurking in an alley somewhere. They can come from all walks of life. The youngest I've seen was 12, the oldest was 78. Basically, anybody can be a stalker. So is Darlene stalking Duncan? Or is this just advanced gawking? In the last week, I've flown from Glasgow to Southampton, then travelled to Bournemouth, then to Birmingham, and then I fly back to Glasgow tonight. Then tomorrow morning, I'm off to London to see him tomorrow night. Then I'll be back to Glasgow on Thursday. Yes, wherever Duncan goes, Darlene follows. Today, it's Birmingham. Darlene is a lovely lady, and, um, yeah, she's, she's always there supporting me, and it's really nice to see. I think she's married, so I don't know what she's telling the husband. <laughs> I guess she's here today, isn't she? Oh, she's here, Duncan. She's here. OK, folks. Hello, Darlene. What that man does to me. Oh. Now see you there are certain similarities in behaviour between gawking and stalking. Anyone who's obsessed enough to follow a celebrity around, go to every show, I mean, that is extraordinary behaviour. I mean, both gawking and stalking are driven by a kind of obsession. Nice to see you, baby. Again. <laughs> How are you? I'm what have you got on your top this time? It's a Duncan James thing you wouldn't understand. Can you sign up? Oh, you? of course Anywhere you can. Anywhere you like. Saucy girl. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Love you to see ya. I'll see you tomorrow. Mm. Oh, stand like this all night. Oh. oh, bless her obsessive little heart. If you thought that was a bit strange, mind, spare a thought for this ex steps type. She managed to stalk herself. Sort of. I was um just going about my business and um, I turned around and there's um, this six foot tall cardboard cut out of myself chasing me down the street. The fan behind um, wanted me to, to sign myself. When something like that is happening, it, it does get a bit scary and um, it's a bit, a bit disturbing really. <laughs> All of which begs the question, where do you draw the line between enthusiastic gawking and celebrity stalking? A gawker is happy to be in a kind of passive role, sending the love out. Stalkers want something back. They want all that emotion validated in some way. Filmmaker Max Carlish knows how easy it is to get pulled across the thin divide. His mission to document the exploits of rock skag monkey Pete Doherty became so obsessive, he was branded a stalker. You're c Obviously, it's a very upsetting, you know, insulting thing to hear about yourself, um, that, you know, you are little better or equivalent to, to being a stalker. Okay. Dude, what are you doing now? Can I come with? Okay. Do you want a bottle of wine? I buy you a bottle of wine. Because, you know, when I was a kid, I used to go down the beach and fucking Greenpeace used to turn up and grease me down and I'm sort of pulling back <laughs> in the seat, you know. Watching the way Max act, you think it's an adult behaving like an obsessed child. Eating for Pete. No, I'm running out of footage, I'm running out of tape as well. But it's a very clear illustration of how getting close to a celebrity in one way or the other can really twist your behaviour. I was enthusiastic, you know. I did yell when I was in the crowd. I did get into the, the sort of fan hysteria, the delirium if you like, of, of those situations. And um, I, I define most people in that situation not to as well. When Pete and his cronies finally turned on Max... Pete, look. Smallest guitar in the fucking world. Yeah, bollocks, mate. 
It was all too clear he'd been transformed from filmmaker to fanatic. I certainly crossed some lines, uh, quite a few different kind of lines, actually. I don't think I was a dangerous obsessive, but I was genuinely out of control. Pete. I know Pete a million times better than you did. I know Pete. I don't think I was a stalker, but I, I, I believe that I was suffering from, you know, pretty florid manic depression. But at least Max was initially welcomed into Pete's inner circle before going a bit native. The full-on stalker writes their own invitation and rules. There are clearly fans out there who want to get very, very close indeed. The problem is, of course, is that some fans will not take no for an answer. They want to get close no matter what's said to them. And they are the dangerous cases. Strike up a real relationship. The man was bearded loner David Martin, who spent years relentlessly pursuing the star. He'd become the textbook stalker. This guy was following me when I was trying to walk my dog in the park, leaving parcels on the front doorstep, hanging around my house, writing letters, basically, you know, every day, and really being quite, you know, invasive of my life. A dedicated stalker is a very difficult thing to get rid of. They can commit half their lives just to the stalking. They just feel that they've got every right to basically hunt somebody down 24 hours a day in order to try and get noticed. I think the danger of celebrity is that it does engender a, a deep kind of, well, there's no other word for it, but it's, it's love. Love is a kind of madness. Indeed it is. And helpfully, mind boffins diagnosing this descent into adult celebrity devotion have classified it with a suitably sexy name. Erotomania. Erotomania is a psychiatric condition whereby the sufferer believes that somebody else, such as a celebrity, is in love with them. Anything the celebrity does, move their eyes, blink, put a hand up, walk away, this can be interpreted as a symbolic message just between the celebrity and the erotomanic, and they genuinely, genuinely believe this. I'm doing to solve the problem. It's so nothing new. From Gordon. Good morning. Some Unlikely fan mail for old-school newsreader Gordon Honeycomb revealed several wannabe paramours who'd misread his blinking as coded come-ons. No, really, they did. Here's voted by 191. Right, OK, Gordon, thanks. What else do you want to say to me? Rested outside the base. Another blink. OK, yeah, right, I'm getting the picture. <clears throat> Excuse me. In a bid to heal... I understand what you're saying. Just you and me, Gordon, no-one else. You're not actually doing the news. You're here to send me a message. And that's all from the news of this morning. And that is fucking bonkers. Yes, but standard issue thinking for myriad erotomanics doing deeply stupid things down the years. To wit this, the top three ways not to impress your fantasy celebrity lover of choice. <laughs> Deluded Masahiko Shizawa plagued Britney with love haiku. I'm chasing you, was his magnum opus. When ordered to stop, he flew 5,000 miles from Japan and broke into her home. Runner up, Dante Soyu wooed Gwyneth with a thousand lovesick letters and one eight inch dildo. Arresting cops found an invitation to their forthcoming wedding pinned on his front door. But wrong, in every single department, Ruth Tagg of Bristol sent her dream VIP a dead rat sprayed with tweed by Lomperic, then tried to burn down his house. Still, who wouldn't pull out all the stops to win the heart of Kendall? Ever since we had celebrity, uh, we've had obsessional behaviour directed the way of the celebrities. We've always had people who wanted to get very, very close to them. It was in the 1980s that stalking really hit the headlines. It was John Lennon's murder and the attempted assassination of Reagan by somebody who wanted to prove his love to Jodie Foster. It might seem that it's everywhere and it's so modern, but actually it's been about for a very long time. Yes, but back then it was film stars, presidents and Beatles. For the 21st century stalker, any bloke from a reality TV show will do. Spencer Smith was the heartthrob of Big Brother 3. That's gross. He could never have guessed how fame would change his life. The fourth person to be evicted from the Big Brother house is... Spencer. 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 When I come out, it was literally doors open, kablamo. There it is, every, you know, everything's... 
ridiculous. You haven't really done anything to deserve any fame. It's not like you're an actor or a singer or a footballer or something. You literally just sat on your ass for a month and come out and everyone thinks you're amazing. One minute you're, you're nobody, next minute everybody's writing your letters and screaming your name. It's just like, ooh, OK. Just try and deal with it the best you can. Most of Spencer's mail was being received by his agent. Spencer was receiving as much fan mail as any of the boy bands I've ever known. Uh, anywhere between 80 to 150 letters a day coming in over a month. That's a big mail bag. People would send you photos of themselves and CDs and, and things like that. And it was just... Uh, Mind blowing, really, just to be having so many letters, you know, sent to you. And um, people used to draw little pictures. And my mum's got one on her wall and a petition to get me back in the house. She's quite proud of. But along with the generation game conveyor belt of cuddly toys and sweet nothings, Tony spotted one letter that stood out from the rest. On one particular day, I opened up a plain envelope, which, as you see, is typed. It's uh, the address is stuck on with cellar tape. And although potentially fan mail, um, most fan mail that comes in does tend to be handwritten and personalised. And the more I read it, the more uncomfortable I felt. Nobody can stop us lynching you. Don't go crying to OK magazine. They don't want to know. You're a reality TV nobody. Your, Your death, death at the hands of a lynch mob will not be mourned because you are ugly, bitter scum. You'll be dead soon, you won't get publicity from your gruesome death and nobody will miss you, you're going to hell soon. If celebrities the new religion, then heat's our Bible. The rich and famous are gods, and holy relics these days come by way of handy camera phones. We're living in a celebrity-obsessed age now. People are obsessed with Heat magazine. People live their lives by it. Want to know what they're wearing, want to know what they smell like, I want to know where they get their hair done, I want to know how much that pair of shoes costs. I want to know everything about them. It all started um, in America years ago, and it sort of filtered over. Yes, like most mad things, it all leads back to the land of the freaks. And at its epicentre, every cork has met. Welcome to Hollywood, everybody. Thank you very much. Here, for just $35, you can buy a seat beside a heavy bone Texan and take the ultimate gorker tour. OK, here we go. They watch them on the screen. They want to be able to touch that part of their lives. They want to see that. They want to actually say, I was there. I was outside of Tom Cruise's house. See that gate right there? The paparazzi guys hang out here and they wait for Tom or Katie to leave, and then they do nothing but follow them all day long. <gasps> Look, a big wall, a gate. There is that sad need that people do want to do these tours, and people are like, wow, that's Tom Cruise's driveway. It's just mad, but people are lapping it up. People do get very emotional about this, even just to seeing the houses. They get very, very excited about that. I've had people cry. One lady almost hyperventilated. She saw Usher walking down Rodeo Drive. I didn't know who Usher was. 
On the tours, you ride along, you take a look at their house, you don't get out. You don't stalk them, you don't go chasing after them. We're the lesser of two evils. It's my way of looking at it. But could Brian's tour be playing into the hands of potential stalkers? If you're an obsessive and you decide that um, Tom Cruise needs to be obliterated, then how are you going to find where he lives? Well, you simply bring up one of these tours and they'll even drive you to his door. You simply kind of remember where it is and get a taxi back there later that afternoon. All good news for our old friends, the Erotto Manics. Brad Pitt's just one of myriad stars whose homes have been targeted. Wannabe actress Athena Rolando got in through his window, then tried on his clothes, then climbed into his bed and waited for him to come home. I'd love to have seen his face when he got home and saw that person wearing his clothes in his bed. Brilliant. This man didn't even bother to take the bus tour. Once he'd selected a target from Hollywood's glamorous glitterati, he bought a $5 map of the star's homes and set off on a truly insane mission. Jonathan Norman was an extremely dangerous man. He let everyone know his purpose was to rape Steven Spielberg. Good Lord. And Norman was relentless in pursuit, climbing Spielberg's walls, ram-raiding the gates, even renting a car just like Mrs. S's and trying to enter, yes, via the back entrance. The last time that he showed up at Spielberg's house, he brought a huge roll of duct tape, three sets of handcuffs, and a razor blade knife. He also had a screaming mask, chloroform, things that he was going to use against Spielberg. Here you have a man stalking Spielberg for a sexual purpose. Spielberg's reaction was, I never thought of myself as a sex symbol. So Spielberg was simply confused by the pull of his well-trimmed beard, but some celebs actually managed to encourage unwelcome attention. As a response to a stalker's infamous paternity claim, writing a massive worldwide hit about it was pretty odd, even by wacko. Quite often, a celebrity will open up an envelope and you'll see every corner of the letter, every corner of the page written on. There's no rhyme or reason to what these people are thinking. They're not thinking rationally. They're not thinking along the same lines that you and I think. No, this isn't a Big Brother audition tape. It's a special video gift sent to one lucky star by an admiring stalker. Go on, show us your nuts. The video we're watching now was actually a gift to the object of his affection, which was a uh, famous female singer-songwriter that had numerous hits in the uh, late 90s. I find a way to say whatever I need to prove to those fates who pick and choose. I'm more of an Elton John kind of guy, but, uh, you know, everybody's got their own taste. While La La Land's weirdest continue to up their ante over in New York, a new website's really whipping up a storm among celeb watchers. It's called Gorka Stalker. If you go to the website, you click on it, and it'll show a map of Manhattan. People texting, I've just seen a Seal and Heidi Klum come out of Barney's on the corner of... And they'll have them spotted there. 
they have the latest where the celebs are in Manhattan right now. I think it's horrible. It's sort of giving everyone that shouldn't have access to the celebrity complete access. I think it's gross. Where do you draw the line? Is that going too far? Is it not? I don't know. I don't know, but I like it. <laughs> it's brilliant. But the celebs are understandably worried. That's why cinema's best-loved A-lister with a conscience has decided to fight back. I wonder how you sleep at night. You should be ashamed. George Clooney is trying to get the word out to all the celebrities to have friends and everyone they know uh, email bogus tips so that Gawker Stalker gets flooded with so many bad tips and that they just get rid of it altogether. But I'm quite surprised that George Clooney's got so upset about it because he seems quite cool, and yet he seems to think he's going to be kidnapped by being on Gawker Stalker. Well, if you want to kidnap George Clooney, you just go to a film premiere or the Caprice or the Ivy or any fancy restaurant and he'll be there. I think George should get over it. So is Gorka Stalker really the threat George would have us believe? To test it out, we've recruited the help of a professional celebrity hunter. In New York is so great to get celebrities. Uh, definitely we could get in the upwards of probably like five celebrities a day. Just last week I saw Drew Barrymore, Adam Sandler, Tara Silton, we saw Kate Beckinsale. Using the website sightings, Brian will try and shoot the celebs with his camera, obviously. OK, so basically, we just got our first one of the day. Uh, Julia Roberts and her husband on 18th Street in Irving Plaza. So we got to get there right now. Let's go. People are always really fascinated with celebrities. And part of being in Manhattan is seeing celebrities outside of that typical Hollywood element. And I think people are really interested in that. Hey, thanks a lot, man. Great job. Thanks a lot. All right. How you doing, sir? Did you possibly uh, see uh, Julia Roberts around here a couple minutes ago? Oh. No. No? Oh. Did you guys possibly happen to see uh, Julia Roberts and her husband walking up this way? You didn't see her walking around? Thanks a lot, man. <laughs> no sign of Julia. Maybe on the next one, we'll get a bit more lucky. That's how it goes. Hmm. If the website's drawing a blank, what's a poor stalker to do? Well, actually, as it's New York, just stand on any street corner long enough, and a large-tongued, pretend school teacher of cock rocks simply bound to walk past. Oh, look, there's one. Thanks a lot, I appreciate it. Small little project. Thank you so much. Can I get that with the thumbs up, actually, Mr. Simmons? Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Out of nowhere, just ran into Gene Simmons. Had nothing to do with uh, whatever whatsoever with Gawker Stalker. What a class act. I mean, couldn't ask for a better hit than that. So that's Gawker Stalker Neil. Just randomly hanging around one. The site claims it protects Clooney and company by waiting 15 minutes before posting a sighting. In reality, it's taking much longer. Sarah Jessica Parker was uh, spotted in the West Village. However, this tip came in at about 9 o'clock in the morning, and here it is about 12.30, and there's just no possible way that I'd be able to go down to her place and, and get that. So uh, the, the website already is really becoming a little bit unrealistic uh, to be able to get celebrities today. George, it looks like you're safe. Phew. Unless someone out there decides to use a bit of logic and initiative, like Brian, and head for the fashionable end of town. You want a camera to play with you? Uh -huh. <laughs> Are you insane? How could you do that? Bring a camera crew with you? <laughs> what are you on tour? <laughs> yes, a rare daytime sighting of bony human pat magnet Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay, can I just have one over the shoulder, honey, right here, please? Thank you, honey. Thank you, Lindsay. You're the best. Oh, a little bit tired from that. I didn't really anticipate that that quickly. Uh, Lindsay Lohan just apparently was eating at the restaurant, and I just ended up uh, seeing a whole bunch of other paparazzis. 
started running like crazy and she ends up going in the side of this gallery over here. So. All right, guys, that's cool, that's cool. Okay, thanks a lot, Lindsay. Have a good day, Lindsay. I'm very happy to announce that I, Brian, am plus two, Gawker is zero. So, you know, on sightings, I'm the man for this. It worked out nice. Obviously, if I was ever a stalker, I don't think this would ever work, you know? You could never, ever do anything to these people because you just, once you get there, they're never there. It's two to three hours later. It's been that way the whole day. We've done this a few times today, and, you know, frankly, I found more celebrities on my own, just out in the street. I really don't think George Clooney has anything to worry about at all. No problem. Yeah, well, not about that website, maybe. But the rest of the internet remains a proper Aladdin's cave for the deluded and determined. Information is so available to the public that there, there is no more secrecy anymore. In the past, one of the big obstacles to kind of successful stalking was it was very, very difficult to find out celebrity-related information. But now we're all gawkers and there are all these gawker magazines and websites. The sad consequence of that is we're now providing more ammunition for actual stalkers. To prove just how vulnerable celebrities are, we challenge this computer guru to track down a Hollywood big cheese online. But who to choose? Oh, go on then. There's a, a tremendous amount of information that's freely available on the internet. I've found his zip code, who his associates are, who his agent happens to be. What else can I find? Now, this tells me that George Clooney spends a lot of his time in the Lake Como area in Italy. This is a really nice close-up. It actually shows the steps leading from the lake right up to the house. That would be really easy for a stalker to get very, very close to the house without any problem. Can I rent something that's nearby so that I can perhaps you know, look out from my balcony into his property? And indeed, there is a really interesting villa. And I can look out onto his garden. He's going to need somebody that's going to maintain the garden for him. There's a nice listing here of about a dozen different companies. If I've got the villa next door, I can just sit and wait, see which company turns up, make friends with some of these people. Admittedly, it's going to take me a lot of time, but if I'm a stalker, that's going to be completely irrelevant. You can understand why, in human culture, the information about celebrity has become so crucial. And yet you can see the downside of it, which is it can be used for very negative purposes. And perhaps we all need to sit back and reflect on how much information we're really providing and how that information can be used by certain people. Coming up, we discover the sinister new gift sent to Big Brother Spencer Smith by his stalker and explore the ultimate thrill inspiring the most dangerous stalkers of all, a chilling quest for fame. He was in a very, very good mood, just glowing in the publicity. These days, everybody seems to want their 15 minutes of fame. He's doing it on a place called he's staying in our board. Taylor, you've been taking stupid pills. No. <laughs> it's now easier than ever to live your celebrity dream. But watch out, because that dream can become a veritable nightmare. When you are up on a screen, putting yourself in front of the public, you're always taking that chance that somebody sitting there is not thinking the same things as your other fans. As a celebrity, stalkers go with the territory. Which brings us back to the ordeal of Spencer Smith. Since coming ninth in Big Brother 3, he's been receiving death threats from his stalker. We've got the stuff ready to kill you with and you will be dead by Christmas. I never thought that it would happen to someone like me. Um, but it has. I guess it's a, it's a take as a compliment, really, shouldn't I? 
after his eviction, Spencer plundered his 15 minutes for all it was worth, appearing in all the tabloids and celebrity magazines. But his stalker was reading them all. I started to get some letters sent to my local pub, which um, I'd done an OK thing, like an at-home thing with OK magazine. Afterwards, I think that's how he got the address. They were, you know, obviously doing the research. It felt like it started to sort of close in on me, which wasn't a particularly nice feeling. Especially when the threats became even more sinister. One letter was lined with razor blades. Others began to target specific events Spencer was due to attend. I was doing a lot of PAs and clubs, and you know, you go into the club, there's two, three thousand people there, you, everyone goes a bit crazy. And you do some photographs, sign some breasts, and go home. That's normally the way it is. Um, but it was just difficult to function in any of those situations. You know, if you're going into a, into a crowded club, you're very, very vulnerable, you're wide open. I was just thinking about, you know, if there is one nutter in here that hates me, who am I to say that they're not going to be here with a gun? It's very difficult to advise celebrities how not to attract these people, because literally by even doing nothing, we can attract stalkers. But what celebrities should try and do is make as few public appearances as possible and give away as little of their own personal life as possible. But then again, depending on what kind of celebrity you are, that might kind of destroy your career. When you're desperately trying to cling to the limelight, it's a tricky balance. Especially if you have to compete against your own least welcome admirer. This huge desire for celebrity status isn't just found in normal members of the public, but it even kind of pervades stalkers themselves because they want a degree of notoriety from it. By getting famous for stalking a certain individual, they're now famous for something, and in their mind, that might be better than nothing. And the most dangerous stalkers of all can be driven to the ultimate extreme by their insatiable thirst for fame. Experts call them the predators. You can't talk about John Lennon's life now without talking about his death and without talking about Mark Chapman. After his arrest, Chapman's most famous line was, I was a nobody until I killed the biggest somebody on earth. It almost sounds like a Beatles lyric. For most predatory stalkers like Chapman, it's more about notoriety than love. Fast forward to the modern era and wannabe Mr. Madonna, Robert Hoskins. He became the most terrifying of all her many stalkers when he turned up at her front door with an unlikely proposition. Madonna's assistant was in the house by herself and the doorbell rang. Hoskins demanded to be let into the house, saying, I'm going to kill you and I'm going to kill everybody else in the house. And he said if Madonna didn't marry him, he was going to slice her throat from ear to ear. It was Madonna's bodyguard who put an end to Hoskins' marriage plans with the help of a bullet. But it got Hoskins the celebrity he craved. At his trial, Robert Hoskins was just glowing in the publicity. I could hear him humming Madonna songs under his breath. He was smiling. He was in a very, very good mood. After the verdict, I got a call from a sheriff's deputy at the jail. And he said, I have some very interesting pictures to show you. And there was graffiti written on all of the walls. I love Madonna. Madonna loves me, the Madonna stalker. He was really proud of himself. I wonder whether there might be a, a whole wing full of um, stalkers. You've got, obviously, the number one guy with I love M Madonna on his walls and next door to him, some sort of bloke with I'm, I'm quite keen on Britney Spears and then I'm reasonably fond of Christina Aguilera and I wouldn't mind getting the autograph of um, somebody from Take That, you know. Well, it certainly takes all sorts. Tonight we've met the loopy obsessives, the frisky erotomanics and the predators hungry for fame. It seems wherever you are on the A to Z list of celebrity, there's somebody out there who wants to be your special friend. Everyone in the public eye is potentially at risk of being stalked. There's loads of people out there who can identify with the most unlikely public figures. Spencer's coming out! Four years since I was on Big Brother, 
And uh, this person's just got worse in those four years. It hasn't died off as, you know, my fame, if you like, has died off. Once a person has been stalked, the world is a very different place for them. For the rest of their lives, they're going to be looking over their shoulder. This is what stalkers do to their victims. They destroy their lives, and it's a form of mental terrorism. It does play on your mind, and it's impossible to, impossible to ignore. You, your imagination starts to run away with you, and um, I will be looking at people and thinking, is it them, is it them, it could be them, it could be anybody. You know, I'm a nervous wreck in my own town. I think, oh, what am I doing? <laughs>